Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs. Firstly, I'm going to apologise for my voice. We're in the throes of having a horrible cold. Um, Izzy was taken down with it and she very kindly passed it on to me. Um, so, please excuse my voice. Today, I'm going to show you how to make my little tiny tot gingerbread man. And the things you're going to need, I'm using the caramel, rainbow loom caramel bands, or caramel as you call them. I have a few white bands and a couple of red bands. I'm also going to be using... Um, toy safety eyes these I believe are the nine millimeter and their little backing and then I've picked out some little buttons now you can pick whatever size buttons you like um, you're going to put two little buttons here and it's completely up to you what size you want I, I wouldn't make them too big they're sort of I guess probably about a couple of centimeters maybe a centimeter and a half or a centimeter well, they're about half a half an inch okay so, uh, or if you're working in centimetres, they're about a cent just a little bit over a centimetre, maybe 12 millimetre. So, there we go. That's what I'm going to be using. It's a tiny tot, so we're going to be using the same style um, that we have always used. You're going to need a stitch marker of some sort. I like to use the little clover soft, not soft, just the clover stitch markers. Um, but I also have been having great success with the little ones that clip on and stop um, the the bands from unraveling or from you know it falls off the bands so you're going to start with a magic ring now you can do your magic ring on your hook or you can use your loom i'm going to show you how to do it on the hook i'm using a 2.75 hook and this is the clover soft touch take a single band wrap it once and twice and we're going to do a magic ring of six so you need to have six little bands already okay you're going to take your first one now if you have not done lumigurumi before i really suggest that you have a look at my beginners guide because otherwise this is going to seem a bit like gibberish to you slide your little end cap on and reclaim now this little end cap is what we're going to be working on okay and if you're scared that you're going to lose it just pop a little something on and it can be your your um your stitch marker and for a stitch marker you can use a c-clip an s-clip a bobby pin safety pin pa paper clip whatever so that's what we're working on that's our little end cap and that first band you're going to just do one over the other like so then you're going to go back through the end cap and pull through your second band and one over the other and then join and then go through the end cap again and I usually do a few bands um, when I'm showing like this just like that and then you can sort of take that off because you can clearly see where the end cap is but uh, this does produce a smaller hole than if you were using your loom when you use your loom to make your magic ring it uh, produces a larger hole so there's my six stitches so I'm going to go through this first stitch and I'm going to do a single crochet and put my stitch marker on it and this is my first stitch and what we're going to do is an increase in each stitch which means we're going to do two stitches two single crochets in each stitch which will take our diameter from six stitches around to 12 stitches so let's go back through that first stitch and do another single crochet and then in the second stitch you're going to do two one and two in the third stitch if you don't throw your bands around <laughs> one and two and in each of these you're just doing two stitches so you will end up with 12 stitches around in total And we're back to the beginning and now what we're going to do is a single crochet followed by an increase so go through your first stitch and do a single crochet move your stitch marker so that that's on the first stitch like so and now the next stitch is going to be an increase one and two and then you do a single crochet 
and then the next stitch you do an increase. We're going to do that till we get to the stitch marker again. A single crochet. And we do an increase. One. And two. Oops, I've only gone through one loop there. I need to go through both. That's important. Let's see where we're at. We did a single, so double, so single. And finish on an increase. You've now got 18 stitches. We're going to do two single crochets followed by an increase. So here's our first single crochet. Move your stitch marker. Move a second single crochet. And an increase. And this will take us to 24 stitches. By the time we've finished our round, and an increase. One, and two, and an increase. Okay, now we're going to do eight rounds of single crochet only. So I'm going to put out four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to have eight little bands here, and I'm going through my first stitch. I'm going to take one from that little pile, do my single crochet, and move my stitch marker. And I'm going to go around using this little pile doing single crochet all the way. Every time I start a new round, I'm going to take it from my little pile that I had with the eight. Come back here, you. So that it counts down how many I have left. So I'm going to catch you back when you have done eight rounds of single crochet. No increases, no decreases, just eight rounds of single crochet. And we'll catch each other back, all right? So I've completed my eight rounds for my face and now we're going to do, here's my last stitch by the way, um, I had it on here, now we're going to do some decreases. When we were building up our little face, our little head here, we went out to two single crochets and an increase. So we're going to start at two single crochets and a decrease and that's what we're going to start with. So here's our first stitch. Let's go through here and let's take this one out. That was just holding on to my last stitch. So this is our first stitch. So that's one single crochet. Move your stitch marker. Two single crochet. This is the next one. 
and then our decrease. Now I'm going to go through the outside loops only. Usually when we're doing a decrease, we go through both when we're actually sealing something up. But to do this is, is um, in as least obvious way as possible, I'm going to go through the outside loops only. And this is a hidden decrease. Pull your band through. And there we go. And then do two. One, two, and another decrease. And we're going to do this till we get round to the stitch marker. One, two, decrease. Then we finish on this decrease like that. Now, first stitch is a single crochet. Get the stitch marker out of the way. Move your stitch marker, followed by a decrease. Again, go through the outside loops only. And then single crochet. Decrease. Single crochet. Decrease. And again, that is the pattern until you meet your stitch marker. on a decrease like so now this is where we're going to do our neck area so what I'm going to do this is my first stitch here the stitch that I just worked on is here you can see I went through this back loop here what I'm going to do is go through the back of it and through my first stitch from the front of it so I'm actually not going through the stitches I'm working on what's called the post and this is the post here and I'm going to take a single band pull it through and do one over the other and put my stitch marker on that and then I'm going to do the same so go back through the stitch that I just came through from the back and then under the stitch that's next to it to grab this post so we're working in what's called the back post. We're going to go all the way around. Just working in the back post, not the actual stitch, but it changes where we put the stitch now. And this is my last one here, like 
so and there's my first stitch again okay so what I'm going to do I'm just stretching this out so that I can see exactly where things are now I'm going to change to white bands so that we can have this little bit of color around his neck this is my first stitch I'm going in through my first stitch I'm going to do a single crochet followed by an increase so my first stitch is oops, a color change so I need to go through my first stitch pull that white band through and loop this on for a color change into a slip stitch change my stitch marker now this second stitch is going to be my increase so one and two the next one is a single and the next one is an increase single and an increase Oopsie. there we go single and increase And finish on an increase one and two. I'm going to spread these out just a little bit. Let's count how many you've got. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen is on your hook. Okay, I am going to do a single crochet. I'm going to do it in the um, caramel, so it's going to be a slip stitch, not a single crochet, like so. I'm going to put my stitch marker on it. And I'm just going to hold this securely like this for a second, because what we really need to do is work out where, let's straighten this up a bit, where we really want to place our eyes, and uh, and you can do that before we stuff. I always find it's a little better to do it before we stuff. I'm using this as the back, so I'm going to squish this down and just work out where I want my eyes. And bear in mind, you can always change this, thankfully. Um, I think I might have my eyes about here. And I'm going to pop the backs on. To hear it click once there we go and the other side click once and then with red we can do his little smiley face now I tend to go down from under the eye I go under the eye here and I'm going to poke my hook out and take a single band and hold it. Then I'm going to work out where I want my next piece to be. And I might have it here. I don't want it to be a huge, massive grin. I'm going to go pull this through both of them and then again have two on my hook. I'm going to try and go straight across here. Pull both through the two loops. And then I'm going to go straight again. I'm going to catch up to where the other eye is. Oopsie. So I want to be level with the other eye, which is probably about here. And I'm going to do this. Let's see if I've done this right. What do you think? Probably, I think. Now, what I want to do is tie these two together. And I think it's probably easiest to tie it with a caramel band. 
and what you want to do is just capture on the inside so I'm going to tie this off like that nice and tight and I'm going to pull this through on the inside where this is so back through the same hole that they're at like that and that's how I'm going to have the little mouth I know one side is a little tighter than the other but I don't think it matters you can pull that through so that's how I'm going to have his little mouth I'm going to do the um, bow tie after the fact now we need to work on arms I've done one arm let's put this red away we don't need that until we do his bow tie I've done one arm we're going to make one together and you're going to make two and we're going to start by doing a magic ring so take a single band, wrap it once and twice. Now you're going to do eight rounds on this magic ring. Uh, but first we need to work out how many around, how many stitches around we need to do. And we're going to do it eight around two. So have eight bands. That's six, seven, eight. So we've got six little bands here. Uh, three, six, eight little bands here and then I have my eight rounds okay so what I'm going to do take my first one I've got my end cap on here take my first one move it over now if you need the help of having a stitch marker to pull the side away that's fine one over the other back through your end cap number two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now through the first stitch you're going to use one of your eight that we have here now I have two white five of the caramel and two white okay so take my first white single crochet and put my stitch marker on we're only doing single crochets in these stitches okay go to another pile of white over here we're leaving these these are counting our rounds so single crochet in the next stick stitch single crochet so just one single crochet in each stitch no increases and as I said you're making two of these and I I'm just going to do the one with you The next stitch is going to be again white take it from that little pile move your stitch marker and then around we go again in white Now we're changing to brown. Oops, come here, you. Go through your first stitch, take your brown, slip stitch, move your stitch marker to it, and around we go in brown. Now, skip the slip stitch and go into your first stitch. Again, take a brown band, 
move your slips your stitch marker and around we go in our brown bands again you're not increasing or decreasing so you should still have eight bands per round and you're doing eight rounds stitch again round move your stitch marker Last round of brown, move your stitch marker, Okay, first stitch, we're changing to white, so do a slip stitch. Move your stitch marker. And let's go around in white. Skip the slip stitch into the first stitch. And around we go for our last round. On our last stitch you're going to go through your first stitch again, pull a band back through and add the loop to it and do it as if you were doing a tie off. Take your stitch marker out. Keeping this on your hook you're going to find another spot in the middle and pull a white band through and do a tie off. Leave this on your hook. 
your last stitch go through four, four little loops pull your band through tie off just like that okay and we can put these on a slip on a stitch marker or you can hold them on another hook or a pencil whatever you have until we're ready but that is how we're going to hold our little arms so i want you to do two of these and we will meet back up to join them when you have done two so we're now going to do his body and to do the body we're going to do six rounds and i've got my six little bands here to mark my rounds of single crochet in caramel now i've already got the uh, the neck in white so these six uh, as i said are going to be in caramel you're going to start at the back here where i've already got my caramel slip stitch we did that together so my next stitch is going to be caramel and i should actually take one from here because this was our this is our first in uh, caramel and all you're going to do is single crochet all the way around. I'm going to do the first couple of, of rounds with you just so that we can get through that single crochet at uh, that slip stitch change, colour change together. Oops. <laughs> so we're coming up to our last couple of white bands. Here's our second last. Here's our last of the white bands. Go through that. Now you're skipping your little slip stitch here. That's the colour change. Going into your first stitch, which has your stitch marker on. Take one from your little counter pile and single crochet. Move your stitch marker onto that and around we go again okay so we are going to do a total of six this we're on our fifth well our second that was one this is two three four five and six i'll catch you back when we've both done that so i've done my six rounds and before i get to my stitch marker on my last round as you can see i'm actually at the back i'm opposite the front <laughs> funny about that and this is where i want to go through this is these two sides are what i'm going to join for my legs this is going to be the front and the back okay so i'm going to take my stitch marker off and i'm going to completely ignore the fact that it's supposed to finish there and i'm going to pop my stitch marker right here where where i perceive it to be the center okay and on this little stitch here and i did it as a single crochet i'm going to back up okay i'm going to go back to the the previous stitch and i'm going to undo that one and i'm going to do it as a slip stitch so here's my end here and i'm going to slip this loop onto it but i'm not going to tie it in a knot i'm going to just leave it like this and i'm going to chain three one two and three I'm going to put a slip stitch on, I'm going to put a stitch marker on here. Just so that I know that this is where everything is going to happen. Okay, so these two are important. Let's lock that in place. This spot here and this spot here. But before we join these together, we really should add some arms. Okay, so we've got our arms here. Now I am going to approximate them so that the first band of my arm, my anchor band, is going to sort of go in line with the end of his eye here. And you can move them around, but I'm going to go through this spot here. 
All right, so there's my, my mouth comes down to this one. My I'm going to put my, my hook through here as my first one, right through here, okay? And I'm going to take one side, one loop from the arm, the anchor band, and I'm going to pull it through. And I'm going to keep it on my hook and go through the loop next to it and take the next anchor band and pull it through and then go to the loop the hole next to it and take the third anchor band and pull it through. Now if we flip this inside you can see I've got three bands right here. Hang on, I can twist this inside out so you can see. There we go, three bands right here. I'm going to take the first, the middle one over the one closest to the end of my hook and do the same again. And then I'm going to find two little spots, two little bands just on the inside here, a little V. It can be white or brown, whatever you want to tie off with. I'm going to go through and tie a slip knot. Don't do it too tight because what you're going to want to do, I'm going to try and make sure I don't lose my stitches here, it doesn't matter, is if it's wrong, you can readjust it. But I do think that that's about where I want it to be. So I'm going to try and do the same spot. I'm going to go back here on this one, I think right about there. Now I'm right-handed so I'm going to go one and two, go back a couple of spots and it's easier for me to work from the furthest to the closest and do my first anchor band. Go to the next spot, grab my second anchor band, go to the next spot, Grab my third anchor band. There's my three anchor bands. Flip his body inside out. Take the center one over the first. Take the last one over. Find a little spot here. Those two will do. And tie off. Not too tight. Just make sure that you are able to readjust them if you need to or adjust them not readjust them I think that's about in the right spot you can tighten these up if you want to now it's probably a good time also here's our little dude he's starting to happen it's probably a good time I'm going to just swap this for one that's actually got a lock on it just because I don't want to be faffing around with that again stuffing Let's stuff his head. We can leave. I don't. I'm not putting stuffing in his arms. I'm going to leave his arms like this. But we can stuff his head definitely. We could also do his bow tie. Now with his bow tie, I didn't do anything fancy with the bow tie. Literally, all I did was have three bands like this, and I took a single and stretched it like that. And what I was trying to do was actually have it have the um, these in the center, okay? And I had this that I had doubled on itself. Let me show you. Here I am trying to describe it. Look at the center. This is this is going to be my center. So I'm going to go one side here, one side here, all right? And these are going to go in the middle. So I've got one side of my band here. And then I go up through the other side here, okay? And, and what I'm and what I'm going to do is pull this back, but I want these three little bands to be in the middle. So I'm going to push them down and grab the other side. Okay, it's a little tricky. Okay, hopefully you can see what I've done. I'm going to pull the other side of this through. So I have the two loops on the inside here, and I'm just going to take a band. And tie them together and that literally is all I did and if you if you can't be bothered doing that just do the um, the main this little bit here and thread them through thread th thread these through that's the other the other way of doing it so pull those so they're even like that and like that and that's that's how I did his bow tie and literally you can do this one and poke your hook through and pull three bands back it's just as easy um, if you don't want to faff around with it let's do some stuffing
I use the 100% polyfill. You can use tissue paper, you, well, um, tissue, toilet tissue. You can use tissues. You can use yarn scraps. You can use stuffing. This is not very expensive. You get this massive bag and, uh, you know, it lasts for ages. I've had this one bag for a very, very long time. The trick with stuffing is to make sure that you're not overstuffing. If you overstuff, what you'll find happen um, is that the the bands stretch and you will see great big gaping holes with your stuffing oozing out. So um, do a little bit at a time and overstuffing is bad. So I think that that is about right. Um, do I think I could put a little bit more in? Yes, but it's going to stretch these out. So I'm quite happy with how it is just like that. And what I've tried to do, because um, the neck, you have the bigger holes, I try and push the stuffing up into the head and not have any in the neck area. Now we're going to stuff his body and his legs after we've made his legs. So let's get rid of that for the minute. Now, back here, we've got our three little bands, okay? One, two, well, we've got the, we've got the slip stitch and the one, the two, and the three chain. And this is on the front side where we want to join them. So take that one off and making sure that this is not twisted, you want it to be straight, you're going to go through, take this off. Now you just want the bottom most part of the band to pull it through and reclaim and do one over the other. Okay, and this is, is where we're going to, this is where we have one leg this side and one leg this side. So we've gone through that stitch. So this is our next stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet and put our stitch marker on it like so. Now we're going to do three rounds in, uh, in the brown. So taking one from this let's do our first round now you have to be careful because when you get to the center you're not going to continue going round you're going to go down the middle the chain in the middle Sorry, I sound really rough, don't I? Never mind. All right, so have a look here. I'm putting my finger down the other side. This is split. You've got two loops this side, two loops this side. Go through the two loops here. That's your first single crochet on the chain across the middle. Then looking here, you've got the two loops this side. Okay, on the side closest to you here. On the right, go through those, and you leave the other two loops for when we do the other leg. And then the same, have a look here, two loops this side. I just dropped a band inside my little creation. That's okay, come out. I'm sure I did. There it is. <laughs> All right back to our first stitch. Let's do our second round. Move your stitch marker. unravel all my work. Back 
to the first stitch. This is our last round of the caramel. Move your stitch marker. stitch. Now we're going to colour change to white. So do a slip stitch. Move your stitch marker. Oops. This is my last brown stitch and I'm going to go through my first stitch with a single white as well okay and I'm just going to move my stitch marker to that this is where we're going to stop okay because we, we still need to stuff the little legs okay so we're going to stop right there we need to do the other side okay so let's do that so starting at the back, you're going to skip the stitch that we have that in. We're going to go into this stitch here and take one, we're going to do three rounds. So you're going to do like a little slip stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do your single crochet. And we'll work our way around. Now you want to make sure you go through all your stitches, you don't want gaping holes anywhere. And there's the two for this side of the chain, and to this side of the chain. And we're back at the beginning here. Now, what we want to do, we've got to miss a slip stitch and go to the first stitch here. Okay, take one from here. And we should probably put a stitch marker on so that we know where on earth we're at. And let's try not to unravel all our work. That would be a shame too. So this is our stitch marker spot right here so we know we're at the beginning. Work our way around again through both loops. sure you go through each stitch Oops. 
we'll see. Pulled it right through. <laughs> last one in the caramel or last round I should say put that on we will have a color change after this round to white Color change to white. So slip stitch, move your stitch marker, and around we go once with the white. through that first stitch with a white and move your stitch marker to it like so now I'm going to stretch this one out this one's got a little bit squeezed there we are now I am not too concerned if one has an extra stitch than the other you've approximated where the legs start so it really doesn't matter to me for mine um, whether it's got the same amount of stitches for the legs or not if you're very pedantic about it and, and it worries you and or you have one that is grossly uh, bigger than the other just do a little decrease um, and, and that should be fine now what we need to do is work out how we're going to place our buttons okay I'm using a little um, threader that I made with a twisty tie and I do have a video tutorial showing you how to do that and I'll link that in the description here. Thread your band onto your metal threader and you're going to just go through um, a couple of these loops. I'm not going through all four, I'm just going to go at a diagonal between two of them if I can do that. Blind as a bat. There we go like so there's one and there's two let's put this away before I lose it dreadful about losing things all right so we're going to work out where we want these little buttons to go you can use bands you don't have to use buttons I'm gonna go here and here so what I'm gonna do I'm going to go on a horizontal not on the up and down I'm gonna go horizontal okay to work out how I want these positioned I'm gonna go through a center and then through one next to it or actually if I go down a bit there's one that's right in the center here and that looks like a good one I'm going to pull one side of my band through okay on the upside down sorry like that loop the other one over splay this open and pop the button through like so now this one I could just do one button if I want to do it higher and you, you can do it however you like. It is completely up to you. You can do it on the horizontal like that. Um, if, if you think 
that you can fit more on by going up and down. If you've got more space uh, up and down, do it up and down. You can go up and down this way. And again, have the button facing with the front to the stomach, like that. Pull the band through, reclaim, one through the other, splay open. So it doesn't matter if it's horizontal or on the vertical. And then you can do the same on the next one where you could just go through. And don't forget, you can go through these bands just because there's not a hole there doesn't mean you can't make a hole there. Okay, and just push your way through and make a space for your button. like so and I've probably done mine a little bit too close that's okay I can fix that so get, get off <laughs> uh, where am I gonna go for this one I'll go through here and maybe I'll go up a bit to come out through the center of that one. There you go. So I think that looks quite cute. Let's do some stuffing. Again, not too much. Do a little bit at a time. And you're going to go through the leg up to the stomach. I, I really don't, uh, I haven't been stuffing right up to the to the neck area because I, I still feel that um, you need to have the separation between the neck and the body. So I'm just going to go through to the tummy area. see your stuffing oozing out you can immediately think to yourself whoops I've put too much in see how it's splaying out and you can see so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use my hook and drag some to the other side now the other fun thing is that with this we're going to have to do feet um, to, to pull his to do his feet and we haven't done those as yet so as we seal this up um, we can pull a bit more of the stuffing out into the feet area so that his body is not oozing stuffing so I think that will do us good for the stuffing so we need to finish up our little guy and we need to just close up his foot his feet I've closed up one and you're going to do, I'm going to do one with you and then you'll do both of them. Um, and it's exactly the same way. So you're going to push your hook through your little uh, stitch marker. And we're doing, working. we're working in the front post. So our band is here. I'm going to push back through this stitch that we were in and come back out this way. Okay, so can you see that? I've gone back through from the front to the back and then through the next stitch by going from the back to the front. And here's that little post that we're talking about. And I'm going to grab a band and pull it through and do a single crochet with it. Okay, and then again, we're going in and pull back out. We're going to do this all the way around for the little foot. And it does get fiddly when you're working in close quarters, you know, you haven't got much room, There's you've got to sort of stretch the bands a bit to see where you're going, but that's okay. Oopsie, there we go, there's the little post.
Now, I'm back at the beginning. I'm going to take my stitch marker off. All we're going to do now is go through one stitch and two stitch. Go through both loops of each stitch, not going just through the back loop. And you're doing decreases. So that's the first decrease. And then let's do another decrease. And you're going to decrease until we can basically tie off. Careful as you do it, you do have to stretch the bands a little bit just to get them. And you will do this to both of the feet. As I said, I've already done mine. And then at this stage, you just go through one of the bands here, one of the pair of the loop, and tie off. Nice and tight. And push the hook from the back side up to the centre of the foot. Grab that tie off band and pull it back in. And there you have a little feet all sealed and tied off. And there we go. There's our little gingerbread man. And this is Chum. So I really hope you enjoy making him. Take care. Bye.